Hello YouTubers, this is Cessna Ace, back again with another 10 video ads video. I have before me 10 VHS tapes, as was the case in the past. All of these tapes came from the flea market. I paid a dollar a piece for them. I don't anticipate that this video is going to take as long as others that I've done in this series. So if I have time, I'm going to talk about a couple of videos that I watched recently including that uh, Fangoria uh, video disc, VHD video discs that I showed in my previous video. Okay, first up we have Antoine Fisher. This was made by 20th Century Fox's budget unit, Fox Searchlight. Okay, one down, nine to go, and all of the remaining tapes are anime. As I stated in a previous video, I've gone ahead and put all of the videos that I have yet to show in alphabetical order. However, I've got about 20 that I picked up over the weekend that I haven't uh, cataloged yet, so they're not in the mix. An installment of Apocalypse Zero. Okay, that leaning forward hurts my back. From Anime Works. I guess this would be a good opportunity to tell another anecdote. In the previous video I did, I included, as I normally do, in the description box links relevant to the video I did, but also I throw in bonus links. And some of the bonus links that I added to that uh, video in the description box are were uh, links to videos on YouTube of cars I've owned in the past. Not the exact car I owned in the past, but the same make and model and year. In one of those videos there is a uh, 1983 Pontiac Grand Prix and that was what I was driving when my life changed forever. I was sitting still waiting for oncoming traffic to clear. I had my right foot on the brake and my left turn signal indicator going. I was waiting for the oncoming traffic to clear so that I could turn into the strip mall because in that strip mall at the time was this huge uh, comic book shop that I went to. Well, anyway, I was sitting there minding my own business waiting for the traffic to clear and the next thing I knew I had a bolt of lightning shoot up my spine and then I was blind. And the next thing I knew, I had a voice at, in my ear, on the driver's side, of course. This kid, I don't know how old he was, 14, 15, must have been about 15. Anyway, he was out joyriding his parents' Cadillac. Now, he didn't have a driver's license, but he did have a learner's permit, but that doesn't cut it. He was begging, please, please, please be okay. Please be okay. Please tell me you're okay. Please tell me you're okay. Well, the reason I couldn't see was because my eyes had so filled with water, or whatever, that uh, it was just a murky cloud. And I was wiping it away as fast as I could, and it was uh, re-tearing. Uh, I wasn't crying, it was just I was tearing. And I, this is one of those involuntary things. When it cleared enough for me to see the kid, all I could tell was that 
he was young and he was black and that's all I know knew I couldn't move except I was able to force my way out of the car but I could not move my neck at all it was locked solid and like a dummy I went around my car middle road and I was trying to see if there was any damage now the 83 Pontiac Grand Prix was a big car the Cadillac that hit me was a big car so if I had not been in a big car I would have been in big trouble but anyway he had hit me so hard that I when I was finally able to turn my head I noticed that the glove box was missing what had happened was it had shot out of the dash hit the back glass bounced off of it and landed under the driver's seat anyway gradually the pain eased off and it eased off and it eased off and I was able to have greater uh, feeling of motion and so then I started doing something else stupid I was crawling underneath my car to see if there was any damage that I couldn't see uh, just by looking at the car from the street couldn't find any damage to my car I didn't even look at his car to see what he had except to write down some pertinent information uh, as I believe I mentioned he had a learner's permit not a driver's license but a learner's permit so I wrote down his name and address and the number of his learner's permit I also wrote down the make model and color of his car I also wrote down the VIN number I also wrote down the license plate number and then he went on his way I don't know what happened uh, beyond that uh, as far as he is concerned uh, other than the fact that uh, when I was dealing with my insurance company and I told them I gave them all that information what they did with it I don't know but I gave my insurance company all that information and fortunately I have always carried uninsured motorist protection meaning I'm covered if somebody without insurance plows into me so that has saved me but ever since then I have been plagued with a ton of health problems and a lot of them I think can be traced back to that incident like I said fortunately I was driving a big car when I was in college a friend of mine had been driving in a um, somebody he was riding in somebody's uh, Newport I think it was called anyway sister car to the Chrysler New Yorker so a big car and they wound up hitting a uh, little Subaru or something and they told me that Subaru disintegrated the car they were driving the Newport was fine not a scratch that they could see like I said this is what they told me so that's just, that was second hand anyway this is from Urban Vision Kaku Midnight Eye I guess that's how you pronounce it back in the 70s in the US women wore their hair big but not that big in fact that lid looks quite a bit twisted got an email last night from Yes Asia they have shipped the Japanese DVD that I ordered the Japanese CD that I ordered and all of the Hong Kong VCDs that I had ordered so I've got that large package coming and I've got a, a smaller package from Yes Asia that should have already uh, been here by now they shipped it already this is number two 
I don't know if you can hear that, but I've got a cat that's insane. And they're in the laundry room. Doing who knows what. She likes to climb up on top of the hot water heater tank. And she usually makes noise, a lot of noise when she does that. So I think that's what that was. Okay, now to switch from Urban Vision to Bandai Entertainment. This is Mobile Suit Gundam Wing Shooting Stars. Mobile Suit Gundam Wing Dark Shadows. Now I know this woman at the flea market, she's got boxes and boxes and boxes of VHS tapes, that, collections that she has bought but hasn't had room to put the tapes out yet. I'm hoping she's got more anime in there somewhere because I've about cleaned her out. And I thought I was the only one that kept this sort of thing. But apparently not. I think it's quite unusual to find a used copy of a VHS tape that still has the inserts. survey card survey says slipping into the family feud for a second there my wife was watching family feud last night I didn't even know that show was still in production I know Richard Dawson is no longer doing it I don't even know if he's still alive but Anyway, this is Mobile Suit Gundam Wing The Cold Battlefield. Mobile Suit Gundam Wing Showdown in Space. Mobile Suit Gundam Wing The Home Fires At least I hope that's what it says. Being dyslexic I sometimes make a mistake and I'm really nearsighted and they've been pushing for a long time for me to get bifocals and I just refuse. They made me nauseous, for one thing. And finally, would anyone out, care, out there care to guess what series this is from? Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. Behold Wing Zero. I'm not 
saving as much time as I thought I was. I figured since there was so much anime in here from the same series that it wouldn't take long, I'd just be able to hold them up. Didn't take into consideration my ability to yabba dabba babble. Okay, first step. In the video that I did yesterday, I showed this. The Fangoria Video Magazine, Volume 1. I watched it yesterday. Turns out that's not the complete title. On screen and on the spine, it goes further. The Fangoria Video Magazine, Volume 1, Tom Savini Special. Now, the thing about this is, it's very gory, which you would expect, I would assume. There are a lot of interviews in here with people like Savini, and also George A. Romero is in here quite a bit. As I mentioned yesterday, this is in English with Japanese subtitles. This is one of the best buying decisions I ever made buying that VHD player because I'm loving it. I didn't love how much it cost to import into the US but I'm kind of curious if there's a volume 2 or 3 or 4 in this because um, as I stated yesterday when I got this and I went to the Laserdisc database to add it to my collection because they also track VHDs it wasn't in there. I submitted it so it's in there now. But I'm kind of curious if there are others in this series as well. Really interesting, but as I said, really gory. And uh, if you live in the UK and are familiar with the video Nasties, brouhaha in the early to mid 80s, a lot of the footage that you see uh, in here would have driven um, the sensors over there in the UK nuts. I mean chisels being hammered into skulls, drills being drilled into various body parts and so forth and so on. Intestines being ripped out which reminds me of a 3D movie I saw um, when I was in college. I went and saw Andy Warhol's Frankenstein in 3D and there was a shot where I don't remember how, how he got injured exactly but he fell on a grate and the camera was shooting up through the grate and you can see his dang his intestines dangling down and they they start dropping down on the camera that's a 3D movie you don't forget. Okay, I want to talk about this for a minute. Tora, Tora, Tora. Now, I love this movie. I've seen it a million times. I have it on VHS. I have it on Laserdisc. I have it on DVD. And I've ordered uh, the Japanese uh, release on DVD. That's the Japanese DVD I'm waiting for. Why did I feel the need to do that when I already have it on DVD? Well, I'll tell you. I was watching this the other night on Turner Classic Movies. And it was hosted by Robert Osborne. And at the end, he mentioned how the film had cost a fortune to make. 25 million dollars, which doesn't sound like a lot now, but this was 1970. Star Wars, which came out in 77, cost 11 million dollars to make, and you don't have any special effects around there. In fact, Tor 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 won the uh, Academy Award for the year it was released for Best Special Effects. But anyway, during the opening credits, I saw something that didn't seem right. They got to the part where they listed the directors. Now, 
Tor 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 is a follow-up to an earlier film that Fox had done just a few years earlier called The Longest Day where they told the story of the Normandy invasion from both the American and British perspectives and the German perspective and they had just a boatload of major stars in that film including John Wayne this film they had a crew working in uh, the US filming the American perspective and they had a crew working in Japan filming the Japanese perspective now, all of the information in this this movie is like 99 percent accurate as to what really happened it's based on two books well a book in a um, journal of some kind that uh, somebody had gone and done a ton of research on the attack on Pearl Harbor and they had access to all his notes and they had access to the book they bought the rights to and they also had both the US and Japanese governments involved because they were, uh, they were going to be using American uh, military equipment and facilities which of course they had to pay back the cost of, of doing that that fuel and all that but the US government had to say yeah that's what happened we approve of this script same thing in Japan the Japanese government they had say so on whether the script that was presented was shot or not it was I believe rewritten several times before it was actually filmed anyway the uh, Japanese sequences they originally had hired legendary director Akira Kurosawa and uh, Fox found out that uh, he was not casting actors but businessmen that he was hoping to get uh, money from in the future to finance future films Fox did not like that at all there were other problems too um, apparently he was uh, beating a lot of people Kurosawa in Japan beating Japanese uh, cam camera crews and so forth Fox didn't like that so they fired him and they hired two more Japanese uh, directors to take his place everything from the Japanese perspective was shot in Japan by Japanese directors using Japanese actors I have to stress that because uh, Hollywood in the past had a bad habit of casting any Asian actor in the part of say someone from Japan Korean Vietnamese to Hollywood it was all the same all of the actors are from the nations that they portray in this film now Richard Fleischer who had directed 20,000 Lakes Under the Sea for Disney and he had directed uh, the Boston Strangler which is a uh, classic I highly recommend the Boston Strangler um, starring Tony Curtis completely blow you away if you, you think in your head oh, Tony Curtis and you don't you can't wrap your mind around the idea of Tony Curtis playing a serial killer but he did a great job and he also directed a uh, fantastic voyage you know the submarine movie where they inject him inside a human body anyway they hired him to direct the American sequences and they hired him to take all of the American footage and all of the Japanese footage and combine them to make a cohesive whole film one that would make sense every video version that I have of this movie when they get to the director's credits it always says Japanese sequences directed by and then it lists the two Japanese directors and then that was followed by directed by Richard Fleischer that's how it is on here however the version Turner Classic Movies ran 
it says American sequences directed by Richard Fleischer, directed by so and so and so, two Japanese directors. And he mentioned Robert Osborne, the host, that uh, fortunately uh, they had taken a precaution of editing the film, editing the film differently for the Japanese market than for the American market, to make it more palatable to Japanese. The film turned out to be a big hit in Japan. In the US it was a big flop. I mean, it cost 25 million, it made about 14 and a half million, which wasn't bad had it not cost 25 million to make. Now, there's a ton of extras on this release and documentaries and so forth. And they talk about when they were filming this sequence, Richard Fleischer talked about how they had this full-size plane that was radio controlled and it had explosives packed in the engine compartment and at the right time they would set that off and it would explode and burst into flames well if you've seen this film you know what happens next the plane does a sudden veer to the uh, left and plows into that row of planes and you see people scattering all over the place sailors and so forth but they were actually stuntmen and they were running for their life because they were running for their lives excellent excellent film when I get the uh, Japanese version I'm going to check it out and see just exactly how it's different from this version. Until next time, stay awesome and I didn't stay under 30 minutes. I did stay under 30 minutes but I didn't stay under 15 which was my goal. Oh well. That's what you get for being a babbler.